Hey you guys, I'm super excited today to bring you this wonderful project I just created for MyTeddyBoo.com and for Peon Designs. It is so gorgeous guys. I love working with both of these products and they make an awesome marriage together. I mean, Amy's dies, it's almost like they were created for this Peon paper. So I'm really, really excited today to share with you what I created on my Teddy Boo. Uh, I used the Eiffel Tower uh, mini album that she has. You get five panels of the Eiffel Tower cut out. Um, and then you also get a three dimensional tower that can go over the edge to uh, give that, you know, some depth. And then you also get a large fleur de lis that is the size of the palm of my hand. It's very nice, very big size, great for using as a pocket. And then you also get these two small pieces that also come with this die. So that's a lot of pieces for the money. So I'll put a link down below for Peon Designs as well as uh, my Teddy Boo. So for this mini, uh, what I used was the Studio of Memories collection from uh, Peon Designs. It goes perfect for this Eiffel Tower theme. Absolutely perfect. And as you can see, this is a really nice chunky mini, but it sits flat, which I really like. So I'm going to share with you guys how I did the binding system on that. And then uh, I just tied it together to keep it together with uh, using some silk ribbon from Maya Road. This is new, and I absolutely love this ribbon. It's so gorgeous. But anyway, so let's get a, let's get started with the walkthrough of the mini. So to begin, what I did was uh, on the cover I used all of the blue values for the mini. Um, uh, in this paper collection. The the Studio of Memories collection comes with pink values as well as blue, but my bases are all part of the bluey green colors, which, um, hello, are my favorite colors. So, <laughs> so excited about that. I used one of the Prima Bling trims down here at the bottom, and this is in the gray tones, another perfect marriage for this peon paper. I fussy cut out one of the butterflies from the paper collection and just kind of rolled the wings down to give it a little dimension with some flat back pearls in the center. And then on the spine, I decorated the spine of this mini with some beautiful lace that I got from Annie Stampin' Corner. Thank you, Anne Marie, for sharing this with me. It was the perfect touch for the spine of my mini. And I love how it wraps around to the side, so it just kind of softens the edge around the corner, too, of the binding. On the tower itself, I used the same technique for making the tower that I used on the tree uh, for the Christmas album that I did. And there's a video on my channel showing you how I did that technique. Um, it's basically just paint the tower, do some hot glue and for texture, and then paint over the hot glue. And then this lovely spray of flowers, and then I fussy cut out this little tag from the paper collection as well. So let's open it up the silk tie so for this page I wanted to keep it kind of simple um, I think the paper itself is so dramatic that uh, the design needed to stay somewhat simplistic so that it uh, you know really showcased the paper very well so I kept the tower very simple on this page and I also um, put this nice uh, photo mat here that holds a three inch photograph so it would it would very it's a very nice size mini that's one thing I like about Amy's minis is there's plenty of room for embellishments and photographs nice size photographs not little tiny photographs so this one would hold three photographs so one two three then I have the hidden journal here in the side and this is just a piece of pale pink uh, basil cardstock that I cut into this little uh, file folder. I just freehanded this, this little shape. And then a love story, the stamp color that I used was the new um, iced spruce that came from the uh, Tim Holtz winter collection. Perfect, perfect color for this mini. It matches it absolutely perfectly. So that's the color that you would need for the distress ink for this particular um, mini pages. The stamp came from Prima. It's from the Prima Printery collection. Uh, and it just kind of is playing peekaboo here on the side. 
and a little love charm up here in the top, then this is my favorite page in the entire mini album. Oh, before I get there, let me show you the binding. So each page is bound together like this, and I left a half inch valley between each of the pages so that it would make up for the room for the dimensional flowers that I wanted to use. And then to just kind of soften this binding edge just a little bit, I added some of these uh, braided pearls onto the side. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, but to, to make this, what I did was I had um, however many panels that you have, um, that, that's how many of these that you will need. And this is cut, for this particular mini, this is cut five and three quarters by three inches. And then I scored it at an inch and a quarter in on each side to give a half inch valley and you're just gonna um you know put together like this so you would need multiples of these and i think i only have this one but what you would do is um you would glue your panels you glue your mini panels like this this would be the outside cover so you would put your panel like this and then cover this with paper to hide this and then on the inside, you would cover this side with paper. And then on this side, you would put the panel here and cover. And on this side, before you cover this side with paper, you would take your second spine. I don't have one cut. But you would take your second spine, glue it like this, then um, have this panel. And then, of course, your next panel would be here. So you just continue with that method all the way through until you have it bound together. And then once it's bound together, it's going to have these pieces that look like this on the spine. And then all I did was cover it with score tape completely and uh, put another sheet of paper right over the top of that to kind of clean it up a little bit and then put my lace over the top of that. So it's a super easy method for binding and it makes this mini like very durable. Love it. Um, this entire book was put together using score tape. I'm in love. This was the first project I've ever used score tape with. I'm throwing out all the red tape that I have and I'm using score tape from here on out. I mean, seriously, it was that good. I loved it. So for this side, this is my favorite page in the entire mini album. And truthfully, this is what I would call my absolute favorite color. This grayish blue color. Oh, it's divine. So what I did was I created this little pocket that is um, made from acetate. It's actually recycled packaging. And I border punched the top and then uh, embossed it with a damask a cuddle bug embossing folder. And I'm not sure which one it is, but um, and I'm not even sure if you can really see it, but it matches this paper perfectly. Then I just took some of the scraps that were left over, cut out the mini Baroque, fastened it together with this little teeny tiny paper clip, I mean binder clip that I got from uh, stamping up. So basically you have room for a small wallet size photo in here, or you could even tuck photos into the pocket and not really mount them to the page. I love this. And you could build this out as many as you would like onto this. And then, of course, the dress form. I used the blue spruce in the background or the ice spruce on the base of the dress form. Uh, and then I embossed it with the copper embossing and then added the same uh, lace to it that is on the cover. Finished it off with some seam binding. Uh, put the spray of flowers around. Tucked in some of this uh, measuring tape ribbon, twill ribbon. This is one of the small Tim Holtz mini dress form uh, thimbles that comes in that kit. And I just wrapped some fibers and then tied it off with a little safety pin. Uh, the flat back pearls are iridescent and they came from Carla's Etsy store. So it's Carla S001. And then on this side, this page is very interactive as well. Uh, I kept my uh, Eiffel Tower painted black. And then I used some uh, turquoise and metallic embossing fold, uh, our embossing powder uh, with a script stamp to kind of give it a little dimension. And it's really hard to see, but I also have the little small floor to leave back here that I painted black. And then I also used the script uh, 
and embossed it with some copper. So it's really hard to see, but it is there. And then uh, just a little spray of flowers, some butterflies cut from the paper collection. It's just the um, scraps left over. This applique that's in the back was another gift from Anne Marie. Thank you, Anne Marie, from Annie Stamping Corner. Made this cute little stick pen to go here and one of the Tim Holtz clocks. And then for this side, the tag that you see here is part of the paper collection. And it's so beautiful, guys. It's so beautiful. Um, and then I fussy cut out this uh, little butterfly. And I put, I put the butterfly onto one of those little wooden clothespins so that when you open it, you can lift this out. I put this to give it some support to kind of hold it like a pocket. And I mounted this tag onto a piece of cardstock. So again, you have lots of room for photographs, journaling, whatever it is that you like. There's lots of real estate here being utilized. And this just tucks back down inside of here and the clip holds it in place. And then of course you see my braided trim in the spine. And then on this side, I have um, used the Fleur de Lis as a pocket and what I did was I used Tim Holtz crackle paint the picket fence on this and then once it was good and dry I covered it with uh, some of the tattered rose distress stain and then I took a baby wipe and wiped it off the top so that it wasn't so intensely pink and I love the blush color that this resulted in then I just took some papers from the scrap cut it into the ornamental die and put it in here in the back. Now I'm, I have plenty of scraps left over that I may go in and cut a couple more of these. So again, lots of room for, for photographs here. The journaling is tucked into this little tiny pocket envelope. And there you go. Lots of room for journaling there or small photographs. I love this paper guys. It's so gorgeous, so gorgeous. And then I'm using this flower to kind of keep the flap of the envelope down so I didn't have to do ugly Velcro. And a uh, little stick pin here. Again, I just cut this off the base of a, one of the photographs. It was a piece of the scrap. It's so beautiful. I don't, I just don't, I, I can't get over just how pretty this paper is. So for this page, what I did was, um, I wanted to go with the bird theme because this paper has some music in the background and it also has a little bird. So this is just a flat, you know, one photograph can fit here. The journaling is tucked away inside the bird cage. Again, just a little piece of the scrap from the paper. Cute little um, area for journaling. It just tucks right into this bird cage. I popped open the bird cage and you can kind of see some of the um, the rails here that were uh, folded back and curled back. Um, I used grunge board to cut this out so it was really stir uh, sturdy. And also, this is another idea. I wanted this to look very shabby. So this is what I did. I've seen, um, I've, I've done this by accident a couple of times and whenever I did it I was like oh, I really love this look so basically what I did and I hope the camera is going to pick it up because it's really cool because I wanted this to have that peeled not just crackled paint but peeled old paint like this bird cage has been sitting in the yard for a long time and had been weathered with time so basically I covered it with the crackle paint like um the Tim Holtz crackle paint and I got it to crackle but while it was drying I had crackled it on the back side as well as the front side and then I placed it on top of a couple of sheets of scrap paper and what happened was is as the paint was drying the paper stuck to the um, crackle and I knew I was going to cut this center pieces out and pull it back. So what happened was, is that paper, it stuck to the bird cage and I was able to give that like it had layers of paint that was peeling off. Super cool technique. Absolutely love it. It made it completely shabby chic. I, I really love the look of that. I got the idea for cutting open the bird cage from um, Sandra Shafai, which on YouTube, which is Sandra. Thank you so much, Sandra. She had done this on a canvas that she had made for my 2007 giveaway. So um, I told her I was going to steal her idea, and she said she'd be flattered. So um, this is the project that I actually stole your idea for. Um, and then I just used some of the same uh, little fiber that is um, on the 
other page. I just used it up here to kind of tie off the bird cage. Now this bird cage is from the Cricut cartridge. I believe it's from Pagoda and it's actually a really long and skinny bird cage. But what I did was I pulled it up in my gypsy and I widened it just a little bit so it gave it another look. And um, I really love the way it looks on here absolutely gorgeous and then this is one of my little um, hand casted birds that I put here made from terracotta clay um, well oh my gosh guys it's so beautiful look at how pretty it is so then on this side this is the side that had inspired the bird cage because um, from the paper collection this side has the actual bird that is printed on it and I really wanted that bird to to escape. You guys know I do not like caged birds at all. So I, um, you know, that's why I made the bird cage open like I did, so that it looked like the little guy had escaped from the bird cage and was sitting on a little tree branch. And then as far as this goes, this is um, another one of those a lift open. Super simple. Photograph here, photograph here, maybe some journaling down here in a photograph. Another photograph could go here. Plenty of real estate for photographs on this. And then this is seam binding and where the edges were raveling out, I just grabbed the center threads and, and um, cinched it so that it gives this nice, cute, 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 um, ruffled look to the seam binding and then I just finished off the edge so it wouldn't fray any further uh, with some uh, matte medium so it you know it would keep it from fraying on the edges finished it off with a spray of flowers the Eiffel Tower on this the technique is is I just took some black paint and some gold paint and I put both on my finger and I just splotted it down all over this so it gave it that kind of marbled look and then I used some of the really thin Rena bling from uh, Carla's Etsy store um, to go on to the little tower to just kind of give it a little dimension maybe make it like an an evening type thing I don't know I kind of like I like that look and then normally I leave the back of my minis very plain, but I could not resist on this one. It was just too much of the paper that was going to go unused. So what I did was I repeated the same technique on the back um, Eiffel Tower as I did on the cover so that they matched. This is actually an ornate frame that I cut from the Teresa Collins Sophisticated Cartridge. I cut it at three inches and this was the size that it yielded. The little girl picture is actually from the paper collection and then I just mounted it in there with some chipboard behind it for stability and added some glossy accents to the top to make it look like a real frame and then just put a small little spray of flowers. I made this pocket for the back cover uh, and then finished off with the rest of the uh, trim from Prima to match the cover so that it all kind of comes together very nicely. I love how this mini, when you sit it on a table, even without it being closed with the, with the silk, it's still very sturdy. It's still very flat. It sits very easily on a countertop, no problems. The extra half inch in the binding gives it plenty of room to expand. So this mini can be chunky, but not um, busting at the seams. It still fits like it fits its frame. I love the sturdiness of the Eiffel Tower on the sides too. It's just, it, it just really came together very nicely. Thank you, Amy, for um, giving me the opportunity to be on your design team. I love working with your dyes. And thank you to Peon for allowing us to guest design with our paper. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is so worth whatever it costs to ship it to the United States. It is so worth it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, please leave me comments.